So the other thing people want to know is uh, current players still on the roster. Um, and, and they asked a slew of questions associated with that, and I'll give you all of them and, and let, just let you talk. Who was the most important defender last year? Who was your biggest hitter? Who are best players coming up that, that people don't know about that will be big contributors? So just kind of address personnel. Uh, some of it may be departed, you know, if you want to talk about guys that really helped you out last year. Mm -hmm. And some of it's guys, what can you look for coming up? What can tech bands look for coming yeah. up? Yeah, well, a couple of the guys that people are going to know about that are unsung heroes to a degree, I always start with the front. I try as a, you know, a skill position looking I don't have any skill, but I look like that I did. Uh, I try to start with the big guys up front because they feel like we don't ever appreciate them. And Josh Fuga and Narell Pollard are two guys that they're so good inside at communicating the game to each other and outside to the ends. Like they do a really good job within the – it's first and ten and the ball's at the minus 35. To you and I, it's a basic play. But they're talking about splits up there. They're talking about this guy's light on his hand or the tight end's here or he's off in this position. Like they do a lot of that communicating that goes unnoticed. Uh, that's really good. And they're not the only ones. You know, Jared Hewitt was that way too. But right. Norrell and Fuga are the most vocal of those guys. Um, and then outside, Cole Nelson is going to be a guy that Virginia Tech fans are going to love. You're going to have his jersey in your man cave, in your uh, ladies' cave. I'm not even sure what the ladies call it, <laughs> kitchen, I guess. But uh, you're going to have a, a Cole Nelson jersey because he is exactly what you want as a Virginia Tech Hokie. In every way, he's going to be one of those guys uh, – Hopefully he stays healthy. Um, Jaden Keller is a guy that if he'll just do his part, then he's he's got the tools to be a stud. Um, you know, besides that, DJ Harvey is a guy that's a little bit probably unsung that uh, he does not have typical your DB that's going to go out and run a 4-2 or 4-3. He's not going to be a guy that he doesn't wow you with his physical appearance. Uh, but is a very savvy football player. He's He reminds me in a lot of ways of Cody Graham. Not quite as big, but just Cody is kind of like, he just understands sports. He Cody could also cover 10 yards faster than anybody And else. he has short area quickness. DJ is the same way. It makes him solid as a punt returner too. He can adjust to the ball quickly. He can make one miss quickly. Uh, this high school blitzer, was insane. Very good yeah. high school player that played a lot of positions. So what has held DJ in particular, because we're kind of intrigued with him, what has held him back from getting more playing time so far? Uh, there was a time during the year that the thought was, you know, is he? do we play him four and redshirt him? Do we, do we play him this year? You know, how much can he contribute on special teams? What's going to play with that? Uh, the typical wear and tear of a freshman year, mentally and physically. And then having Dorian, Jermaine Waller, and Armani Chapman, you know, with Breon Murray, who's got a lot of game reps. Sometimes you just end up stuck in it like that. And and that's really where DJ was. I mean, we have had our eye on DJ since the – not necessarily the very beginning. We knew he was a good player. And had never seen him, signed him sight unseen. He committed to us sight seen, but didn't see any of us. <laughs> so there was a lot of mystery in it. And, uh, you know, we just started realizing, like, this kid learns fast. He's got instincts. He understands leverage and angles and kind of those things. Uh, Keontae Jenkins is another guy like that. Keontae is gifted. He is a special, special talent, God-given ability. Uh, you know, just though if I tell our guys all the time or tell people all the time, if you throw – as a DB coach, my arm stinks, but I throw the ball a lot. And if I have 15 guys in a line, I can throw the same ball 14 times in a drill. And when it gets to Keontae, I've got to like load up and get my back foot and back hip in the ground and unleash it. Because if I throw it like I do to everybody else, it's like he's standing there drinking a Coke. Is that all you got, Coach? Before, yeah. <laughs> like, and, yeah. I mean, you've got to un – and when you – when for me, I unload it, it's like he's now catching it like everybody else in the other – and so mm -hmm. there's some skill and tools in that. And there's some guys I'm sure I forgot to mention, but – there's some there's some talent now. The cupboard is certainly not bare. It's guys that got to grow and develop, but uh, stacked with a couple of other recruiting classes and then how you supplement your roster with transfers in uh, the portal or JUCO, it's got a chance. Uh, it's interesting to hear you talk about Narelle Pollard and Josh Fuga like that because I'm just not surprised to hear you single them out. Just from the, see, seeing them in practice and, and seeing, seeing Narelle's progression in particular 
it, when when he's gone from scheme to scheme and maybe hasn't been a good fit this year, a better fit that year, that kind of thing. He just seems like he works really hard at it, and Fuga seems really enthusiastic. From the outside and, looking in, they've always seemed like the right type of guys. I'll yeah, just put they it care way. about their craft. They, they love they football. Are both, and I love both of them. I love Narell Pollard. Maybe – uh, I don't know. I'm probably being hyperbolic right now at this point, but I love Narelle Pollard. And the reason, as much as I've, any player I've ever coached, the reason why is he's the same guy always. It's whether he's talking to us on this TV, like these lights and this set has, it, you're going to have to bleep him. Like you're going to have yeah. to edit him. And same yeah. way he talks to his dad, his professors, the ladies in the cap. It's just, that's who he is. It's not to be fr- a front. Or to be tough, this just I'm Narelle Pollard. And when you talk to me, this is what you get. And it's every day, always the same. And I love that. I, I look him. forward to that day. <laughs> I, yeah, I love that about him. All right.